What's up, War Report family? We are back with another great edition of the Auburn Express podcast, powered by the War Report. Joining me for the first time ever on the channel. But uh, in life, we, we work together in another life. He covers uh, sports in the South for Sports Visions Radio. Thrift, Beringer, Thrift, man. Uh, Auburn plays Vanderbilt on Saturday. Never in my life did I think we'd be sitting here talking about an Auburn Vandy game where it might actually be considered an upset if Auburn beats Vanderbilt. I mean, the times that we live in right now, Mike, but I, I got to say it's an honor and a privilege to be on here. I've been keeping up with the War Report for quite some time. Uh, you do great work and looking forward for being on here, hopefully many more times if you'll have me. But I, I'm yeah. with you, man. This is pretty pretty surreal to see that Vanderbilt, even though they are not a favorite in terms of Vegas odds, and everyone else that covers college football, uh, they see Vanderbilt as the better team, as they should. Yeah, Papia is the reason I think we can both agree that they see Vanderbilt as the better team. They're having a pretty amazing season for Vanderbilt. They play Texas to a three-point loss, obviously in Nashville. But Pavia is the one you have to stop if you're Auburn. People have been asking me all week, what do you think about Vanderbilt? Or, well, can they handle Vanderbilt. I'm like, no, you got to handle Diego Pavia. Stop him and you probably win this game. But can they stop him? He's got a history of beating Hugh Freeze teams. Yeah, exactly right. And you saw what happened last year. This guy put on an absolute clinic. He looked good against Texas. We all know about what he did to Alabama a few weeks ago, man. I I'm really surprised. I was just looking at the line six and a half. What, what is Vegas looking at right now? I mean, I guess if you go by talent by talent, looking at each team going down their roster, obviously you would say Auburn has the more talent. But you got to include in the coaching staffs for Vanderbilt. You talk about Diego Pavia. I'm talking about the entire staff for Vanderbilt. He, they outcoached Texas, I felt like, last week. They outcoached Alabama. Those are the two uh, prominent coaching staffs in the SEC I, I, I felt like there's a lot of other factors, maybe not going into those odds, but I'm, I'm with you. Uh, Diego is a guy that I said this on the Sports Vision radio show with you. If he's playing at Auburn right now, what would be Auburn's record? I would say at least five and three, not three and five. Yeah, look, I think going back to what you said about the line, I think the line is where it is. Because Auburn won against Kentucky. If Auburn had lost, I, I would be really interested to see where that line is going to be at. Being in Jordan Hare has something to do with it being there, obviously. But it looks like Auburn found something on Saturday. That That's my best explanation for it. If you look at, obviously, we'll get to it later. But Jarquez Hunter running wild gives you hope. Uh, Payton Thorne limiting mistakes he had the one interception but for the most part he was 20 20 for, he was 20 for 26 and if i told you the quarterback was going to throw the ball over 25 times and had a 76 completion percentage like i i would i would say auburn wins yeah, I, I'm with you on that too, man. And uh, this guy, he, he's been balling out what i've seen um from him and I, i'm wondering after what he did at New Mexico State with Auburn, why was Vanderbilt the only team from the Southeastern Conference that went after someone like him? I I, I don't know, man. I, I, I've been very impressed with this guy. And obviously, once he graduates, he's not going to be one of those, I guess, in Vanderbilt uh, lore, they're going to talk about him because of the upset over Alabama. But in SEC lore, you're not going to think of Diego Pavia. But you should, obviously, if he had played at a – SEC school for four years. Who knows what kind of stats he put up? Reminds me a little bit of Stetson Bennett with his athletic ability and be able to make plays outside of the pocket. I've been really impressed with him and Vanderbilt as a whole. I think this is one of the best coaching jobs I've seen out of anybody this year. Let's go back to what you said about coaching. Uh, coaching is how less talented teams beat more talented teams. And if you ask me, Vandy beats Alabama because, quite honestly, uh, Kalen DeBoer got outcoached. He got outcoached by Cartley. And that, and that's not – I don't think that's debatable. No. They held the ball for 42 minutes. You got outcoached. You got out-executed, even though you had the supremely talented more team. As a matter of fact, Thrift, no coach in the history of college football has ever inherited a more talented team than Kalen DeBoer inherited, and he got beat. Mm -hmm. He got yeah. beat. 
I, I'm with you, Mike. And I, me and you've gone back and forth about Alabama's talent. And, you know, a lot of people transfer from Nick Saban. But you are right. There still is a enough talent to win a national championship on this Alabama team. And I, I'm with you. And that's where – I know a lot of people don't understand maybe who Clark Lee is and the job he's done at Vanderbilt because they haven't made a bowl game. They hadn't had a winning season. But remember what he inherited. If you said Kalen Boer, uh, DeBoer inherited the most talented team ever for a first-year head coach, Clark Lee inherited one of the worst rosters in or programs in, in, in the SEC in the last 10 to 15 years. And now – he has them ranked. They won't finish ranked in the top 25 right. probably this year. But the fact that they were ranked in the top 25, that is saying something. And it makes me think, just like what happened with James Franklin, the last time Vanderbilt was ranked in 2012 and 2013, that he's going to end up leaving. He's going to get a big-time job somewhere. And I hate that for Vanderbilt. Hopefully he does stay there because he's an, an alumna of the university. But I, I just, I, I'm with you, man. The, the coaching aspect it it no matter how talented your team is, ask Jimbo Fisher. If your coaching is subpar, it can make you look like an average team or worse. Yeah, look, uh, Auburn doesn't have average talent, no. but you're again coaching. Coaching is why they have a below average record. And uh, you know we we've gone back and forth on our show about whether this is a truly a rebuild for Hugh Freeze or not. Uh, I don't like the record being blamed on the on the supposed rebuild. I, I don't think it's, you're not, you're not three and five right now because you're rebuilding. You're three and right. five right now because you've been out coached week in and week out. And finally they ran into a team in Kentucky that didn't out coach them. I, I thought, but they also changed what they did, which I was happy to see as well too. The ability to pivot away from what's not working effectively. Wish it would have happened earlier in the season, but Hey, like, you know, it comes when it comes, right? Yeah, exactly right. I, I I had that same mindset, man. And I asked you the same question on on another show that we've done is if Auburn decides and and this continues, let's say they beat Vanderbilt, beat UL Monroe and they upset either A&M or Alabama and finish 6 and 6, are you going to be like, "Hey, where was this all season long? This could have been a 9 or 10 win team." Or are you going to be okay with the fact that maybe they overcame those adversities and got better down the stretch and have momentum heading into the offseason? I'm leaning more towards the latter, man. It, it, I'm not about losing, and if you're getting better, no matter when it comes, you, the season's a wash. Let's build for next year. I just hate that it took this long to hand a guy a ball that needed the ball and needed touches seven, eight weeks ago. Don't right. understand why he didn't get those touches then. But again, like you said, that's neither here nor there, Mike. I'm just <laughs> glad he finally got some touches. He had 278 yards on the ground on Saturday. That vaulted him to first in the SEC in rushing. Uh, he's 11th in the country right now, Thrift, mm. uh, in rushing. So uh, he's 500 yards away from being Auburn's third all-time rusher. If you're going to win games down the stretch, if you're going to get to a bowl game, it's going to be because you handed the ball to Jarquez Hunter. Uh, now, uh Aside from handing it to Hunter, you still got to be able to pass a little bit. And we're going to talk about that next, right after a quick word from our sponsors. This segment of the War Report is brought to you by our friends at Los Amigos Restaurant Thrift. Uh, look, if you're in the Opelika area and you're looking for a little Mexican flavor, mm. Los Amigos is a locally owned family environment. Uh, and it is a great place to come watch Saturday college football or even the NFL on Sundays. Uh, listen, everybody from the community goes to this restaurant, uh, from law enforcement to veterans. Uh, you can host homecoming parties. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of active duty military have uh, uh, welcome home parties there. They're great members of the community. Do us a favor. If you're in the Opelika, Auburn area and you're hungry, visit Los Amigos Mexican Restaurant uh, at the USA Town Center. They're at 1220 Fox Run Avenue, Suite 200 in Opelika, Alabama. Coming back here, Thrift. Auburn changed their approach with Peyton Thorne. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they put the ball in his hands a lot at the beginning of the season. They've taken the ball out of his hands. They ditched a lot of the RPO stuff and just started playing straight up football. Uh, source told me that Derek Nix called a majority of the plays on Saturday. Uh, and they've gone back and forth about whether the call plays or whether or not the call plays for Hugh. Uh, I think, I like what I saw on Saturday. Now, obviously, the opponent matters in terms of who you call it. But 
Uh, if, if that's the game that Derek Nix called, I hope that they will do more of that, and I hope that it works. Yeah, I'm with you, man. And I, I want to say something. I'm looking at the career stats of Dark West Hunter. He never had. He's never had a thousand yard year. Okay, now he's on pace to do that this year, which I hope he's able to. And I, I think that has nothing to do with him and his talent. I think it has to do with the fact that. 2021 and 22, you played in an offense that you're battling with Tank Bigsby. And then in last year, I, I don't know how he didn't get over a thousand yards other than the fact that the offense was up and down. He missed but, game one. He missed the game one due to suspension. But if he had played, yes, I think he would have broken a thousand yards. Yeah, well, and I think he still has, you know, four more weeks of regular season left too. So I think he eventually will get over a thousand yards this year for in his career. But I my mindset is this, man. As much as I want to give credit to Derek Nix and the way that you're saying, and from what w everyone that covers the program is saying, that seeing this offense play smash mouth football against a defense that held Georgia to less than 20 points just a f what early in the season, I think third, fourth week of the season, I think that is credit to the offensive line that we've known is a strong point for this Auburn football team, especially in the run game. Why did it take this long? And my second question is this. Peyton Thorne had 500 yards rushing last year. Why have we not seen more of him running the football and instead of doing the RPO like you made mention and, and trying to get the ball out quickly, trying to do the intermediate passing game stuff that apparently he struggles at I don't understand it at all. I'm taken aback by it, but I am proud for Jarquez Hunter, and I'm excited for him because I want to see this guy playing at the next level, and right now what he did against Kentucky, you're seeing him move up in the draft boards. Yeah, this was, I think, probably one of the more disappointing parts of them putting the ball in Peyton Thorne's hands as much as they did early in the season was it felt like they were wasting Jarquez Hunter's last year of college football. And these guys get such a limited chance to make an impression sometimes now he's going to have played four years i thought that he would be a top two or three rusher in all of auburn history when he came here i said that before he played a single down threat did he and remind you of the guy that you really liked a lot in uh, in trey and trey back mason in yeah and trey yeah. mason back yeah. in 2013 the what he did and his running ability their yeah. body style i mean they're very eerily similar man as running backs uh yeah you know trey trey was a little different he was very very strong strong like jarquez jarquez squats almost like 700 pounds or something yeah. crazy but thrift he i think trey was a little harder to tackle and he had a, a lower center of gravity it was just he would just in 2013 he would just fall forward for three yards like if you needed a first down it was third and three and he was automatic first down but you know Jarquez you know it's it's rare to see somebody of his talent last a whole three years in college I mean four years in college it's very you know, normally if they're playing on better teams he's out of here his junior year at the latest mm -hmm. he's not sticking around for his senior season uh so sticking around long enough to break those records is something that's rare I think, which is why we see some of those records stand for so long. Uh, but, you know, look, a better Peyton Thorn will should lead to a better Jarquez Hunter. So if he's accurate and he's hitting balls downfield and they're doing what they did on Saturday, which is hitting Cam Coleman on anything other than a deep bomb go route, mm -hmm. <laughs> as it felt like all they were running with him, then I think that you're going to see Jarquez Hunter absolutely pop off these last four games. So uh, Auburn needs a better Peyton Thorne, regardless of how much you decide to give it to Jarquez Hunter. And what's a better Peyton Thorne, in your opinion? Because, again, are you asking him to throw the ball 20, 25, 30 times? No way, man. And I, I'm not calling him Nick Marshall. And I'm not saying he is near the athlete Nick Marshall was. And Nick Marshall is one of the best at running that type of offense that we saw in 2013, whether you want to call it the triple option from spread, whatever, the Gus Miles on special. But could he do similar things because he is an athlete and he did have 500 yards rushing last year. He did have close to 100 or over 100 yeah. against Georgia, one of the best defenses in the country. 
Why are we not seeing more of him utilized in the run game instead of it being an RPO, just being run heavy, centered around Peyton Thorne, Jarquez Hunter, and that big offensive line that did a great job against a really good Kentucky defense. Maybe that's where he's most successful is where he doesn't have to think as much and just play make. That's where I think Peyton Thorne can be great for Auburn, and hopefully we see that in these last couple of weeks. I think that that's, that's the key, right? I think the key is – Take the decision away from him because in key moments this year in the RPO, he's not made the right decision. No. But as an athlete, we saw it against Georgia last year. Uh, you know, Georgia fans will tell you that game was tight and they were worried. And Peyton Thorne busted a 60 yarder on them. Right. Right. So uh, he's got the athleticism to be dangerous in the run game. Obviously, you want to keep him healthy, uh, but he's got to make the throws to keep the defense honest because, you know, I, the only place I disagree with you is I think 25 throws a game is fine for Peyton Thorne. If if he does what he did on Saturday, he went 20 for 26. It didn't feel like he was slinging the ball around a bunch when you watched it. He was just terribly efficient, and they gave him some easier throws, and they, which gave the wide receivers easier catches, and, and they executed it, man. He, he made some great throws. Like, there was one throw, Thrift, where they are in their own end zone on Saturday. He scrambles out to the right. And finds Keandre Lambert Smith. He uh, Keandre adjusts to the ball. Peyton puts the ball exactly where it had to be. Keandre went to the ground, but it was going to be Ke Keandre or nobody on that. So he threw the ball low to, you know, because he was throwing back against his body a little bit. But he protected the football, and I think that that's what you need from Peyton Thorne if he can make those sorts of throws. I I think twenty five. Uh, throws a game is fine for him. Now, if we're going to get up to 30 over 30, I agree with you. That We don't want to see that. No. I, I, and that's a good point, man. And especially if they're putting him in position where he, and he makes throws and makes good decisions where he's not turning the football over, I, I, I'm with you. I mean, that puts Auburn in a, in a place where they can at least compete with some yeah. of the top teams like Alabama and A&M. How about this? And this is maybe a little bit of a fire take. Maybe a more athletic A.J. McCarron Maybe his game manager is also utilizing his legs. Remember McCarron in 2011? He didn't throw the ball 400 million times. He just handed it off to Trent Richardson. He didn't make a lot of mistakes, and he was the best quarterback in that 2011 National Championship against LSU. Maybe Peyton Thorne could be that, but with his legs, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. So instead of being a typical game manager in the pocket, throwing 16 to 20 times, maybe also utilizes. He had 12 carries against Kentucky. I know it was only for 10 yards. A lot of those came because he was sacked. But uh, do you like the fact that he could be a game manager, but not in the sense that you think of a game manager, maybe a little bit different? Yeah, you know, I think that we always – there's there's like a negative connotation that's been put on that term. Exactly. Manager, right? You think unathletic quarterback that hands yeah. it off to someone and then gets it out to his playmaker when he needs to. Yeah, there's my my good friend Cole Kublik talks about this all the time. There's nothing wrong with being a game manager. Uh, it means that you're you may not be asked to go out and win the game, but you're not going to lose the game. You protect the football and you make the throws that need to be made when they need to be made. But you're not throwing the ball in volume as a game manager. And I think that's exactly where Peyton Thorne needs to be because when he's doing that effectively and he does use his legs it's surprising for a defense because they forget you kind of lull them to sleep thrift and then he takes off on you on a third down where you've dropped back in coverage because he's been making these basic throws all game and you forget this guy can run for 15 yards on you just like that yeah, and we don't see a lot of zone reads that we saw from last year. I mean, because it was more about RPO and getting the ball out. And I'm not saying he doesn't do zone reads, but I want to see more zone reads where he keeps it and, and maybe utilizes his legs a lot more like you talked about, but not as frequent as we saw at yeah. the, with the volume from last year. And maybe that's because SC defenses knew that, hey, you caught us off guard. You're not catching us off guard this time. We know <laughs> you can take off a run like you did against Georgia for 60 yards. But I think that's his strong suit, man. I really do. I just hate for someone like Peyton Thorne, who was decent at Michigan State, and then obviously who Hugh Freeze thought this year was going to be one of the more, as did I. One of my predictions was that he was going to break with this receiving core the, the record that Damian Craig for most passing yards in a season. Obviously, I was completely wrong on that, and maybe I didn't know who Peyton Thorne was. I was just going off of what – the coaching staff and everyone else leading up to this season. Um, but that, again, neither here nor there. We just got to make do with what is 
at the quarterback position, which is obviously going to be Peyton Thorne for the rest of this year. And I'm hoping that this is the game plan, especially for these last four weeks. And who knows? Maybe they can get three out of four wins and make a bowl game. Yeah. Thrift, uh, before we get out of here, I got to get a score prediction from you. Uh, (laughs) Predict this one for me. How do you see this one playing out? What's the score and why? Okay. I'm going to go Auburn wins this game 23 to 16. OK, and I'm, I'm 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 not trying to be a homer. I know a lot of people want to say, how are you going to pick against Vanderbilt? Who you just said Vanderbilt probably has the better coaching staff right now. But momentum is leaning towards this Auburn team. And I have a feeling if you really, truly believe in Hugh Freeze, maybe last Saturday night is going to be that point. Every great coach has it mm-hmm. in their career in which you look back, and that was the turning point in which this Auburn program started becoming from a pretender and a team that is just happy to make a bowl game to maybe contender winning a national championship. And if they able to keep that same game plan against Vanderbilt, the defense, who you've been high on all year long, is one of the most underrated units in the entire SEC. I think they're going to be a good good job at holding Diego Pavia at bay because – if there's one team that should know what he can do, if you don't obviously prepare for it and come in motivated, it's Auburn because what he did last year with New Mexico State. So I think Auburn comes in, same game plan. Jarquez has over 150 yards. The defense plays lights out. And they win a low-scoring game down to the wire, 23-16. Uh, the 23-16 would not be low scoring for a team that uh, has been struggling to score 21 points. Uh, I, I, I I like that prediction. I think if Auburn scores anything over 21 points, they win this game the way the defense has been playing. Uh, look, if you win time of possession in this one and you give these guys an opportunity to not be you know, worn out on the field the whole game, I, I like Auburn in this one. Uh, I I'm going to go... I'm going to give Auburn for the first time this year. I'm going to give them over 30. I'm going to give them 31 17. Jeez. Where's this yeah. offense coming from? Yeah, I think that the defense and special teams are going to contribute in this one. So a couple of short fields by the defense, and it's going to be Keldrick Falk and Eugene Asante tracking down Diego Pavia all day. Keldrick has been an absolute wrecking ball so far this season. That guy's going to be, uh, he's going to be a future first or second round pick. I, I like those guys to get after it, and I think that they'll take this challenge of stopping Diego Pavia personally. Also, watch out for the young guy, the freshman, Demarcus Riddick. He's got tons of athleticism. If he plays within himself and he can keep contained and not overrun plays this week, I like him to make Pavia's life hell this week. And maybe they pull off a pick six or, you know, uh, Kayla Lee should have had one last week. He ran out of bounds after he he, he picked the ball off uh, on that goal line stand. But I, I like Auburn. I like Auburn 31 to 17 in this one. Third, yeah. I want to thank you for joining me. And before we get out of here, tell people where they can find you. Yeah, man, you can find us on social media, for, uh, Facebook, Sports Visions, also on in- Instagram and, and on Twitter, Coach T underscore SV. So go give us a follow, man. Appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you on Saturday. I'll be up in the press box with you, baby. I can't wait. Guys, that's it for another great edition of the Auburn Express, powered by the War Report. If you want more content like this, please hit like and subscribe. We are the War Report on every social media platform, TW Report on TikTok. We're signing off, and as always, we're equal.